Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Nipper. Welcome back to my channel. Um, tonight I thought I would shoot a quick video because I'm going to be experimenting with something. Um, I've never done this before, but I just, a few weeks ago I got new hand carters, which I've wanted for quite a while. And I've used these before. I've used them to card some alpaca that I have from a fleece that is kind of an eh shape and they've worked beautifully. And I'll do a longer video on that a little bit later on. But I have a few minutes before all the kids go to bed where I actually have them outside. You might hear them yelling in the background or a few dogs barking because it's about seven or eight o'clock at night here. And I had a few minutes and I thought that what I might want to try is blending some beautiful Angora top that I have here. It's nice and fluffy. And I've never ever had Angora in a top before. It's, I've always spun it just from the cloud form, but one of my local yarn shops, um, they have a great selection of fiber and they had this Angora fiber. So I thought, well, let's give it a shot, but I'm going to combine it using the carters with this ah, lovely black alpaca. So it'll probably um, change it into a nice gray, or we might just have a little bit of the Angora fibers mixed in there to give it um, just that nice halo effect that Angora has. Now I'm not going to do a 50-50 combination, or I might in the beginning just to check it out and see what it has. But more likely I'll probably do three-fourths alpaca with one-fourth um, Angora. But right now in the beginning here, I'm just going to put it and see what happens. So um, just a second and I will adjust the camera here and we'll get started. Place a carter. You see it's curved. You see that, that curve? It fits beautifully on your leg right here. Set it on your leg. And what you're going to do is first load the carter with your fiber, okay? So I think I'm going to put down some alpaca first because Angora is such a flyaway thin fiber. You see, I'm just taking a little bit of alpaca and I'm just sort of setting it on there. I'm not pushing it down into the teeth. It's resting right on top, okay? And I'm gonna go across and do a row like this. So I'm not going to pack the carter. I'm just gonna put a little bit on. Now what I'm doing, you see here's, here's where I started with the first row. I went this way all the way across and now I'm coming back and putting a little bit of alpaca on the top here. You can see I do not have a lot on here at all. I'll put a little bit more right there. And now what I'm going to do is add the Angora. Again, this is just an experiment for me and I thought it might be something fun that you all might wanna watch. Um, we'll see. Okay, this is a much shorter staple length. So I'm just going to add a little bit here and there. See, I'm just setting it down and pulling, okay? I'm gonna set it down in place. Okay, so here is what it looks like. Um, I didn't weigh anything or measure it out. This is just to see how the two fibers blend. Now, there is a huge difference in staple length. If you remember, staple is where you can pull a bit of fiber, this is really long, good grief. And it's the length at which the fiber, um, the individual pieces are measured from end to end. And whoa, this is some long fiber. So I'm not sure how this is going to go, but we'll give it a shot. You can learn more sometimes from making a mistake than you can from doing it correct for years. So we're gonna see. Okay, so you leave your your drum or your carter 
on your hand here, or your knee, you take your second carter in your dominant hand, and what you're going to do is you're just gonna catch the edges. See, see how they're hanging down? You're just gonna catch them. Not, you're not, and you're gonna whip, you're gonna brush, pull away, and then whip up to flip the fiber back, okay? Brush, pull away, whip, brush. Now you're not, yeah, the, out, the Angora is not getting in there very well. You are not, um, you're hearing the combs touch each other as I do this, but I am not shoving my carters. I'm not like banging them down into each other and then pulling. It's just the tips. Let me see if you can see just the very lightest of pressure, okay? I'm going to move up a little bit, get a little bit of the fiber that's here. You can see, I'm holding this so that you can see it instead of on my knee. And you'll notice each time I pull this one away, I do this little flicking motion to flick the very long staple length back over the carter. Because if it was this way and I went to comb the other fibers, you see this first? fiber on this right hand card, my right, could be folded over like this. And then if I put the carters down on top of each other, it just gets wrinkled up. <laughs> Look at it from this side. You can see a little bit of the angora there. Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit more. This would probably not be the best thing to spin together. Simply the difference in staple length, but I'm going to try it, see what happens. Okay, so now you'll see I transferred most of what was on this carter. See if I can pick up just a few of these loose pieces. I got a few. Onto this one, and now what you do is you're going to, you see how I have all of the fiber here is hanging down, okay? I'm going to do this and sort of rest, ease the fibers off this way, and rest them on the new carter. So see, this one is clean, this one is on, and you can see that the Angora has blend it a little bit. Oh, you can see a little bit of Angora there. This is probably not a combination that I will, that I will um, actually spin from. Now I'm going to just do it again. I'm just going to card it again. So again, lightly card and flip, card and flip. Just pulling a little bit off. I'm going to move a little faster this time. But what I was saying is this is probably not something that I will spin from simply because of the different staple length. I, th I feel like that's pretty a pretty extreme difference in staple length. Um, yeah, it's turning a little bit gray. I don't know if it's showing up that much, but where the Angora was right here, it's, it's got a, a nice soft gray tint to it. Um, but what I'm saying is I don't think that I would actually spin this combination. I might give it a shot just to see how it feels. But because the staple length is so, so different, that is probably not something that I would, would want to try out. Okay, now I'm going to do Laying it down here again. Uh, see, I told you I'm not an expert at this at all. One more pass. It's nice. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to blend these two together the way that you would do on a drum carter. Um, but since I'm just doing a demonstration in a little bit, I didn't want to break out the drum carter. So this will be the last pass. And then I'll show you how to take it off.
of the hand cards. Now, I should probably have finer um, cloth on here. This is just cloth for normal, um, normal fiber, um, what, you, what wouldn't be too coarse or too fine. And you see I've got a bunch stuck here, a bunch of alpaca here. I'm gonna just take that off. I don't like that. Okay, so this is pretty well combined. I'm gonna tell you I've made a few mistakes. Um, there's not, actually not enough fiber on here. When I started carding, I would load up the, the um, carter and it would be way too full. But here it's not quite enough, but that's okay. Like I said, we're all in this together, we're just learning. So what I'm going to do now is just take, take the fiber off. So I'm gonna lay it down here like this. Take it off and then this is what you can use this nice back, nice curved back of your carter for. You can make a roll egg. So you're gonna rest your fiber on your carter. You notice how it's a little bit wider, it falls off the edge. I sort of tuck those pieces in. I sort of fold them in this way and then I just roll. This does not roll as nicely, I'll tell you, as um, Merino does, simply because alpaca is has a different fleece structure, but it is rolling nicely. And you just roll it into a roll egg. It actually has made a pretty nice roll egg um, on the carter, and you just go roll it a few times, make sure it stays together. And there you have a nice combination of alpaca and angora. And you know what? I don't have anything. Uh, I have something on my Echo that I was just playing around with. That, this, that will not be the best wheel to spin this combination on, but let me pull that over and we'll just see how this Angora and Alpaca blend spins up. So let me get my Echo set up. So what I'm going to do, this is Merino and it was just something I was goofing around with, so I don't, I don't care that I'm messing it up. I'm going to attach the alpaca to the merino. What I'm going to do is do the same type of join I've done several times before. I'm holding the initial yarn this way. I'm going to just lay the tiniest, this tiny, tiny bit of fiber on this yarn and wait until the spin catches or the twist catches not the spin okay so I feel it spinning now I'm gonna lay it down on the bits of purple fluff I have in my hands and I'm going sorry there was a child <laughs> and uh, this is and I'm going to spin this just sort of I'm not taking as much care with it because I'm not trying to have a perfect spin here. I just want to get a feel. See, look at this. I'm going to stop for a second. I want to get a feel for the difference in the staple length. Okay, so you can, I don't know if you can see this that well, but right here, you can see some of the Angora right there on top of the alpaca. It's much much shorter in the staple length. But it's actually, and it's, it's producing a little barber pulling effect here, which I do not normally like. Um, but you know what? For the difference in the staple length, here's some more of the Angora. What seems to have happened with the carding, I probably didn't card it as much as I should have because it's not well blended here at all. This is a lesson for me. Look, I think you can see this. Look at this white. Let me see, let me get where you can, there. You see this white right here? Uh, let's see, I let twist. I'm trying to do all this before I hear my kids getting ready to come in. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that was a, big bunch of Angora that had not been well blended. So if I 
was going to do this combination, two things. I would definitely card it more. And the second thing is that the difference in staple length is not the problem I thought it was going to be. Now, I think that I am not putting enough twist in this yarn. So let me do the little pullback test. Okay, let me pull out a piece. Sorry if you heard screaming there. My eight-year-old daughter is in a season where she really likes to scream. She will sit outside in our yard and just scream her head off for no reason. Okay, um, yeah, definitely not enough twist in this. It um, doesn't quite have as much energy or bounce as I'd like to see, but that's, that's to be expected since I'm on my Echo. So I would put a little more twist in there. Um, but the bottom line is it's not, not as difficult to spin as I thought it would be. I really thought the difference in staple length was going to be a much bigger issue than it is, but it's not. Okay, so anyway, that's it for our little experiment in carding Angora and Alpaca together. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something from watching me fumble around. If you did, please like and subscribe and share the video. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I love teaching, so let me know what you'd like to see in the future. I also love interacting with everybody, so please comment on the videos. I'm Stephanie Nipper, and until next time,